It's almost like a picture out there, but it really is a golf course. A golf course designed by the artist designer, Mike Strantz, the late Mike Strantz, who not only created golf courses for what they should be, but for what they could be. When you play True Blue, you better have an open mind because you may see a few things you don't normally see on other golf courses. We're also going to be down the road at the sister course, Caledonia, bringing you the best of Myrtle Beach golf in these two golf courses that have been acclaimed worldwide for not only their beauty, but for their great excitement for the golfers, right here on The Traveling Golfer. It's not limited edition, not cast conditioned, not exclusive or extra, nor is it private reserve. It is, however, a rare breed, American lager from an American-owned, family-operated brewery. Since 1829, we kept it so simple, we're still in fashion. Fancy that. America's oldest brewery, Yingling. Bob Saganti, the director of golf operations at both True Blue and Caledonia. As we sit on the front patio here at Caledonia with all the beauty of this old rice plantation, Bob, welcome to the Traveling Golfer. Tony, uh, welcome to Caledonia. It's great to see you again. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it's amazing. He's been down here 23 years from the Philadelphia area, native, and has not adopted the southern drawl <laughs> <laughs> no I, I sure haven't but uh you know some say, some folks from drexel hill say i have but uh it, it's been a fantastic uh transition in my life 23 years in the Pauly's island area and, and absolutely static to be here well we can certainly understand why i know of no more contagious lifestyle in america than the low country lifestyle and i'm sure that it's the same the way you feel about it. Too. Well, it, it's an amazing place to live. I've raised my family here. You know, we're two miles from the beach. We have world-class golf, world-class fishing, world-class gardens, all in a very casual, relaxed neighborhood. This is one of the few places I've been in the country where millionaires and, and paupers go out and spend a day on the water, come back and tell a couple of fish tales and have a drink or two, and everyone gets home a little early down here in the, in the low country. Well, speaking of fish tales, True Blue being the more modern setting of the two properties. Caledonia is actually called Caledonia Golf and Fish Club. Tell us the background on that. Well, there's a brief history here. The ownership of the property formed a company called Ponderosa Inc. And they're all local gentlemen. And they're all have been throughout their lives, have been avid hunters and fishermen, and ironically, not really golfers per se. So they purchased Caledonia, which was a working rice plantation back in the 1700s. They purchased it in 1971 to hunt and fish. And along came uh, you know, 1993, 1994. They met up with a young architect, Mike Strantz, and some other folks in the golf business. Of course, as we know, the 90s golf was really taken off, suggested that this would make you know, a fairly nice setting for a golf course, which is the understatement uh, of all time here. And uh, the ownership gave Mike Strantz, who was a fantastic architect and uh, really an artist is what he was. They gave him carte blanche to do what he wanted with uh, the property. And in January 1994, Caledonia Golf and Fish Club opened. And brought a lot of the artistic talents with him, as well as the engineering techniques that you need to build a good golf course. These two golf courses, 20 years later, have gotten actually better. They have gotten better with time. And, and you know, we describe Caledonia as a classic beauty, a, uh, an older style golf course, but I don't really see it that way. It has an interesting route. What, you know, what makes it a classic beauty is the live oaks and everything else, but it's really a very modern design throughout the golf course with the routing and the bunkering and the green shapes and you know, resistance to some shots and everything else. But what, you know, I think where the, the classic feel comes to the amazing floral and fauna, the landscape here that, you know, our landscape budget is second to none. A lot of this is natural, so the live oak. So really, Caledonia is an amazing, and we can call it a classic beauty. 
This is number seven at Caledonia, and I love this hole. It's got everything. It's got the water, the beach bunker, bleeding down into the water, the live oak trees, a green ring by azaleas, and we're with head professional Mark Gurton. Mark, tell us about it. Oh, it's a great medium length par four that has uh, quite a bit of challenge out there. You can quite possibly make a birdie, but with the largest green in the golf course protected by a giant oak tree, there's uh, a little trouble out there as well. Well, we're not afraid of it. It's got so much beauty, we can't wait to have at it. Let's go. All right, let's go. There you go. Mark, I learned the hard way. The tee shot has to be on the left side of that fairway. This tree over here is a bogey maker, but not for you. Well, the putter can do it to me. <laughs> now, Bob, once you do get off the property in the midst of the low country here, there is some other things to do. Well, there are certainly other things to do, Tony. Uh, Polly's Island is famous for its restaurants. I mean, anything from Italian to steak to seafood. Certainly, you can venture up to the Marsh Walk on Merle's Inlet. What used to be called Restaurant Row is now called the Marsh Walk. And you know, it, it, at one time, we used to roll up the sidewalks here at uh, 8 p.m. You know, now we're staying open until 11 p.m. So it's not the hustle and bustle of Myrtle Beach, but it's certainly enough dining and entertainment options here. And now. if somebody wants a little bit of culture, well, they'll have to visit the world famous Brook Green Gardens, Tony, up in Merle's Inlet with uh, featuring the sculptures of Remington. It's, it's a world renowned destination. It's something to do besides golf, dining, and uh, having a cocktail or two. So, great place to visit. Jonah? Great, great, great. All right. We're in the fish shed here at Caledonia. This is a famous little casual place right outside the clubhouse where members and sometimes guests gather for special things, but the most special thing that happens here is all in the hands of John Rush right here. Right. He is the keeper of the famous Caledonia fish stew recipe that was handed down from the late George Yum Yum Young. And this is it right here, right, right John? Right here. Tell us a little bit I know you can't give the whole secret away. Right. But tell us a little bit about what goes into the fish stew. Well, we uh, <clears throat> we cut our onions and fish up, and uh, we put that'll be the last thing that goes into the pot. You put all your ingredients in the in the pot, and uh, once you get your ingredients in, let it cook for so long. Then just you, so long, yeah. The old then, famous so long. Then you add your your ingredients and let that cook for so long. And then the last thing you put in, you fish and you chop potatoes. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's it good. simmers down, and people have been coming to Caledonia for years. Right. Looking forward to look, this, both look, in the clubhouse. Look for this. And out on the golf course, right? And you should try, because you can only find us right here. Good stuff. <laughs> What if we told you that you could get more distance by increasing loft? What if the pros were increasing their loft a full degree or more mid-season? That's what happens when we move weight low and forward. Are you ready for more distance? SLDR from TaylorMade. Here in the clubhouse at True Blue, they've got their own little hall of fame. All of the national awards, the national stories, 
including one previewing the arrival of the traveling golfer. No doubt about it, Bob. You mentioned True Blue is the naughty sister. Uh, and it really is a devilish golf course that is especially attractive to players. Not that other people can't play it, but the better players love the challenges of True Blue. Well, they really do. And it's interesting that, that you make that point. When the golf course was first designed, it, it, and Mike again had carte blanche from the ownership, and it was designed as a golf course for players to play, single digits. And, you know, it was really stretched out to about 7,100 yards. And, and there were some, you know, there were some difficult spots on the golf course that were hard for the 18 handicap to navigate. Most of the greens at True Blue are big. This one is gigantic, 171 feet from front to back with a huge slope in the middle. We realize that in the Myrtle Beach Marketplace, 18 Handicap is your bread and butter. I mean, that's 80, 85% of our golfers. So we've made some tweaks to the golf course back in 2000, widened some landing areas and everything else. But it, it's still a golf course that really, really good players like to play all the way back. But we've also made enough changes where we have five, six sets of tees. Now we'll put out junior sets of tees. And the golf course will play anywhere from 4,900 to, you know, the pro, pro length of 7125. So it's really become a golf course for everybody. We're on the ninth hole at True Blue Plantation, a long par five with a long waste area down the right side. A lot of waste areas on True Blue. We've got head professional Bart Romano. That waste area is a bit of the look of True Blue, isn't it, Bart? Yes, uh, a lot of waste areas here at True Blue Golf Club. Uh, also, generous landing areas, very large fairways. It's a little different look from the tee. It's very visually intimidating, but the fairways are very generous. Well, we're thankful for these wide tee shot landing areas, especially on this hole, and we're going to have at it. Yes, sir. All right. Your honor. How about that? First ever traveling golfer, Birdie Eagle. Great shot, Bart. I appreciate it. Thank you. Great yeah. playing, man. Yeah. You know, uh, this is a challenging golf course, but if you do get it on the greens, you can make a few birdies here. Yeah, the uh, greens aren't quite quite severe. There's a lot of subtle breaks. So you, once you're on the green, you have a lot of chance, uh, a lot of chances to make a lot of putt. For the rest of the golfers, though, to make it a little bit easier, the key when they come to True Blue? The key at True Blue Golf Club to have an enjoyable day is select the right tee to play from. We have five sets of tees here, and if you choose the correct one, it makes the golf courses play much more enjoyable. It can be a great day of golf. Now, there you go. You got Tony's tip, courtesy of Bart, at True Blue. Now, to have two nationally renowned golf courses on the same property, is quite an attraction, especially to people coming to Myrtle Beach because they want to get a lot of golf in. You picked up on that recently and started a packaging company so that the people can stay here, play here, and if they want to play some other places, take care of that too. We certainly do. We started a company called Caledonia Golf Vacation Zoo uh, just back in early 2010. And, and what we really wanted to do, because we, our ownership only owns these golf courses. They're, they don't own hotels. so. We relied on other travel providers and hotels to, you know, book book the tours to come to play here. And we've had a fantastic relationship with those folks. But what we wanted to do was we wanted to offer something a little different. We wanted to offer multi-play packages at Caledonia and True Blue, where you could come in on a five-round package and play Caledonia four times and True Blue one time or three and two or however you wanted to do it. And we were fortunate enough to partner with our company over Beach Vacations over at True Blue Resort where we have the golf villas there and, and you know here we are smack dab in the middle of Pauly's Island with the two golf courses yeah. surrounding True Blue Resort. It's really been a very nice fit for our company. 
From what was once a working rice plantation, it's all been sculpted and carved for you by the artist Mike Strantz. This is the 18th hole at Caledonia Golf and Fish Club, a fitting end to our trip through the southern part of Myrtle Beach, this low country that is so spectacularly beautiful is now also beauty and challenge on Caledonia and of course at True Blue. We hope you enjoyed the trip with the traveling golfer. Tony Leodora's golf wardrobe courtesy of Antigua, the leader in modern golf apparel. Well, the back porch at Caledonia is one of the great places to sit, watch the people come up 18, maybe even heckle them a little bit. Does that ever happen, Bob? Every once in a while, Tony, <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs>